bread. Very good. Rose has been studying her Hebrew again. <laughs> Beth is the word, is the Hebrew word for house, and lehem for bread. So it's the house of bread, and it was called that because it was kind of the fertile valley that sat outside of Jerusalem, and it was where all of the grains were grown. And it seems that if Bethlehem was going through a famine, then everyone was going through a famine. Now we remember reading in Judges that there were several times when God brought famine to the Hebrews because of their disobedience. They weren't listening, and he needed to get their attention again. And it's at one of these points, and it doesn't really indicate which one, that Elimelech makes the decision that he's going to pack up his family and he's going to move to Moab. Now, you remember the Moabites, right? They were the ones who dominated the Hebrews for 18 years, who kept them under submission until Ehud freed them. The Moabs were not the good guys in this. The Moabs were the pagans. The Moabs were cruel. The Moabites were not the people that God wanted them to be living with. In fact, even backing up a little more, the Moabites, do you know where they came from? Who they were? Remember the story of Lot? Yes? There was an incestuous relationship there. The Moabites were born out of all of that. They were the outsiders. They were the rejected family members. And as a result of that, they became very cruel. And what Elimelech has done now is he's gone out of the house of bread, out of the fertile valley, out of God's providence. And he's moved to Moab, to the enemy, to those who had oppressed them already, to the very people that they had been delivered from. Why? Well, let me try this. Elimelech's name. One of the cool things about Hebrew is everybody's name had a meaning. There is no just Jack or Mike or Bill. They all meant something. Elimelech's name meant God is king. And so the man whose name God is king moves from God's providence to God's enemies. Why? Because he doesn't trust that God is going to take care of them. The famine's too great. He isn't looking to God for help. He's looking to the Moabites for help. And so our whole story starts out with this migration of Elimelech and Naomi and their two sons taking off for Moab to avoid a famine that God had brought upon the people because they didn't trust God for their own care. Not quite as innocent as what it all sounded in Ruth, is it? Well, they get there, and to make matters worse, the two sons marry Moabite women. Now, that was another prohibition. There's a few bad choices going on here, right? You can see that? Elimelech hasn't made the right choice. His two sons haven't made the right choice. Maybe that's why they had the names that they had. Malan and Chilion. Malan meaning sickly. Chilion meaning pining. And then everything happens. Everything falls apart. Elimelech dies, Malan dies, Chilion dies, and it leaves Naomi and Ruth and Orpha. Just kind of an aside from that, any of you ever heard of a lady by the name of Oprah? That's because her mother misspelled Orpha by her own story. She was naming her after the second daughter-in-law, the one that left and misspelled it. Oh, well, it sounded better when I was putting it together. So they're left alone. Now, Naomi, whose name means pleasantness, one who is blessed, now feels as though God is against her. I thought that was interesting. 
they left the country of God's blessings because they felt that God was against them. And now she feels that God is against them. I guess when it becomes personal, then all of a sudden we take it on a little bit differently. And Naomi did just that. She says, don't call me Naomi, pleasantness. Call me Mara, bitterness. Why? Because God has turned against me and everything is bad. Ever been there? Ever had one of those days? Felt as though God was against you and your name could have been Mara. Well, with that, she talks to her daughter-in-laws and she says, you know, it's probably best if you go home. In other words, stay here in Moab, but go back to your people, go back to your family, go back to your gods, and then I'm just going to go home and die. Essentially, that's what she's telling them. Now, that isn't too far off the truth, because if you were a woman at that time, if you did not have a husband, if you did not have a provider, the chances of you living very long were slim. And then you throw in two other women who also don't have husbands, who also don't have providers in an agrarian society where it was the men who took care of all of the harvesting, all of the planting, all of the crops. Then you have multiplied your chances of dying quickly. And on top of that, Naomi now realizes These daughters-in-law, who aren't an asset, by the way, are also foreigners, which puts them even lower on the food chain. So even if they go back to Bethlehem, to the house of bread, to the fertile crescent, to God's provision, they're going to be low on the totem pole because they're widows, and even lower because she has two foreigners. So the story gets bleaker and bleaker. And it certainly would have been better for Ruth if she would have taken Naomi up on her offer and gone home. I mean, that would have been the smart decision because she could have gone back to her own family, back to people who would have cared for her. But instead she says, don't tell me to leave you because where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. And when you die, which could be tomorrow, by the way, I will die too, and there I will be buried. So if you die in Moab, I'll be buried there. If you die in Bethlehem, I'll be buried there. And your God will be my God. Now that's a remarkable statement of faith. Ruth is now saying that she's giving up all of her God, she's giving up her family, she's giving up her security, she's giving up all of the things that most of us strive for all of our life. And she's saying, and I'm going to throw my lot in with you, Naomi. And we're going to tackle this together. And whatever happens to you is going to happen to me. So while Orpha went and turned her back and left. By the way, Orpha means the nape of the neck, which is kind of interesting since that's what she turned to Naomi, isn't it, and walked away. I guess that's a God sense of humor. But all of these things Naomi counted as loss, as bitterness. Now, all of that is about to change. Why? Well, because God is going to intervene. So what they do is they go back to Bethlehem. They go back to the house of bread. And there, the famine has ended. God's provision is there. And now, all they need to do is be able to count on some of the graciousness of God's people. And Naomi says, well, I do have some relatives there. There's this guy by the name of Boaz. The strong one is what his name means. He was the strong, silent type. Boaz is a little bit older. He's very wealthy. He owns a lot of land. He is very good at what he does in terms of planting and harvesting, and he is one of the grain producers for the area. And they go, and there in Bethlehem, they start gleaning. Any of you ever heard of gleaners? Okay, cool.